Hello everyone and welcome to Magic Gathering Strat. I'm Binky B and this will be a short series of the top cards in modern according to me. So I'm not going to upload that much content as far as gameplay goes because the new ban list is not online, the new format is not online, so the only real format I could potentially play is Pauper and Pauper is already well covered. So figured I might as well do something non-gameplay, uh, uh, some non-gameplay videos. So I'm gonna start off with the top 10 white cards in Modern. So what makes a card qualify for this list? Well it has to be very good of course. Uh, it could be a main deck card, it could be a sideboard card. The only thing I'm really looking at is how good a card is at what, is, what it does and what it does for the color uh, specifically. Let's say there was a very efficient new white burn spell. Let's say Sandblast also targeted players or something. That that would make it a real winner in the color but maybe not compared to Lightning Bolt or something. So I want to kick things off here and uh, we'll see where we land. So number 10 on my list is Soulfire Grandmaster. Well, how could I put this in the list? It, it hasn't even been... Yeah, it has released today, so... Today is the first day you could potentially even play with the card. How can I put it here? Well, let's just say I'm speculating a bit on this one, but... Have you checked out the cards? The, the card? Besides the very boring name, I mean, it's a 2-2 lifelink for 2. Mm, that's not really good enough. I mean it's okay, but for modern, uh, it's not really enough. Then you have a second row of text. Instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink. Okay, so my lightning bolts are now lightning helix, and my lightning helix are now lightning helix plus healing soul. This card makes it flat out amazingly hard to <laughs> lose a race. It just It's just impossible. It's not a very good top deck if you don't have a specific set of cards in hand already of course but come on 2 to for 2 lifelink and it just upgrades all your burn spells to tools that your your opponent just has to kill this one if they can and that's really good because one of the more uh, skill intensive matches is the aggressive mirrors and if you if you have this in play well you're going to win it's pretty hard to lose and we're not even done. The card has a third ability here, or a third row, for two blue red blue red hybrid mana, so four mana in total. You can make the next instance of sorcery spell you cast this turn from your hand, basically having buyback. So if you top deck this uh, and you have a pretty good set of mana, you could potentially buy back, let's say, a lightning bolt every turn. For, for just 5 mana you get to cast a lightning helix. And that might sound a bit weak, but if you don't, you're not doing anything and your opponent is not doing anything, getting to use 5 mana every turn, guaranteed, is very potent. We haven't even begun talking about the broken stuff you can do with this. Let's say you have uh, Stoke the Flames. Well, then it's just 4 mana Stoke the Flames. And the more tokens you have or whatever, the more times you can do it. So that's just insane. And obviously if you have something like um, Time Warp. I see it's 9 mana, it's, it's a pretty large amount, but as soon as you reach 9 mana you just won, won the game. You can't lose. There's no way. There is no mana vaults and stuff in, in Modern, so with infinite turns you should win. <laughs> so uh, that is pretty nice. And you don't have to be 3 colors, you can be 2. So right, that's some speculation. Let's move on to number nine on the list. Perfury nodes. Another card that you probably might even never heard of or never seen in play. But this is also a card that is just completely broken in half, ex especially in this color. So you're playing a slower role, a controller deck or a mid-range deck, and your opponent is playing some creatures. They go like turn one, curd ape, and turn two, something. And on turn two you drop a perfor nodes. 
Okay. Well, it doesn't do anything right away, so they get to attack. Then it's your turn. And you've killed their biggest. Uh, no, the smallest creatures, creature for free. And now what are, what are they going to do? Keep playing creatures? That's not really that great, especially if you can follow it up with another removal spell. Alright, so they're not going to play creatures. Well then, this will die eventually, but the whole purpose of playing the card is to get time. Get to like turn 4 or 5 where you can start dropping huge things like, uh, I don't know, Sun Titan or something big. Or for that matter maybe a Sphinx of the Isle or something that you can't lose with. This is just insanely powerful. It's not a very good turn 1 play on the play, but it's like, yeah. It's 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 really really good, so uh, I would be surprised now when Delver and Pod has been um, hit with a banhammer that it's it's pretty likely that Sue and other creature based deck will rise, and then Perfect Notes will just harvest victories for you. All right, let's go on to number eight. Elish Norn Grand Cenobite. It's extremely expensive, 7 mana, but this is another card that just wins games. I mean, against, like we said, like Nyasu or something, they might have a path to exile, they might not, and if they don't, they can't, they can't ever attack and they can never kill this card. And yes, I know, the casting cost is a bit restrictive, you probably have to shield it in some, some way or just ramp into it, but when it comes to big white creatures, this is as good as it gets. It's a good win condition, pairs well with your creatures, and f most of the time just kills everything they have. Can't do much better than that. Alright, let's move on. Number 7. Archangel of Thune. So this was a staple card in Birthing Pod, uh, pretty much since it was printed together with Spike Feeder. And it's not that many other decks that actually plays it, but I think it has an important role to play in the format. And uh, I would be surprised if it's not picked up more. Uh, it's just big enough that it survives a lightning bolt, which is all that matters. And the fact that it has lifelink to get you back from, from behind and a relevant ability that grows your theme makes it a... Uh, one man army basically or one woman army I should say so this is a very high class white creature one of the very best and if you can combine it with anything let's let's say a scavenging use or <laughs> soulfire grandmaster maybe wow you're just you're just crushing your opponent okay let's move on to number six Thalia guardian of Thraven has been a pain in my ass ever since it was printed. So it's cheap, wins every combat, and hoses control decks and combo decks. For two mana, that's just insane. You can't get anything better than this. Except for the other five cards on the list, but in this category, that's basically the best thing that you can do. So it's a decent mainboard card and a decent sideboard card. It's a win condition, and it just makes everything so hard for your opponent. And for the times where you're playing against Storm, that's just hilarious. Uh, it's not that great against, let's say, Escape Shift, but if you have it on the play on turn two, it's definitely good enough. So Thalia gets the number six slot. So number five, Leyland of Sanctity. This is like a format, multi-format all-star cyber card and sometimes even mainboard. When you start with this on turn zero and you're playing against like burn, I mean the percentage of the games you're going to lose has to be way below 5%. I mean alright if you kept like zero lands and Leyland and Sanctity then you might lose but I, I just don't see how a burn deck could win through this nor like let's say mono black discard will have a really hard time against this 
Uh, Scapeshift can't win unless they have a cryptic command to bounce it. I mean, there's, it's just so, so good. I never leave my house for a tournament without at least considering if Leyland Sanctity should be in the board, despite the colors I'm playing. Whew. It doesn't get much better than this. Or, let's check it out. Place number four. Daybreak Coronet. So this is a bit sketchy one and I think I have to explain myself here. This card only goes into one deck. One specific deck. So how can it be number four on the list? Well, there is no other card in that deck that ends games faster and more uh, reliant than this card. So the deck I'm talking about is obviously Hexproof or Aura Hexproof or Boggles, whatever you want to call it. Holy crap, when they go like turn one, guy, turn two, suit it up with whatever and then they break Coronet. There's no way you can raise this card. You can never take down a creature in combat. You can't sweep it away, most likely. Uh, you can't attack past it. And you can't raise it. There's just no way. So every time this card comes down, you basically lose. As far as I can remember, I've beaten this card like twice when it has resolved. Uh, once with like three young pyromancers and treasure cruises, and once with um, uh, celestial flare, and that was against a bad opponent. So it's really, really hard to win if this card resolves, and that should qualify t to the list in my opinion. But of course, it only goes into that deck and nothing else. So let's check out place number three. Oh yes, Restoration Angel. How many Thragtas can you bounce with this before it gets broken? This, uh, compared to Arcane Thune, is pretty similar, but this costs one mana less, only one white, and it has flash. Uh, of course it also has the bounce uh, or flicker uh, effect too, uh, and that's also really good, obviously. So it beats the Archangel in basically every way except in direct head-to-head -head combat so yeah this card is just fantastic it's good in creature decks it's, it's good in control decks it, it's good in mid-range decks it's good everywhere just a straight-up fantastic card and the fact that it survives lightning bolt just makes it almost broken when you're facing like John or John, can they tap out for Liliana off the veil and like, yeah, discard a card and you go, okay, end of turn, Restoration Angel, attack it. No, it's basically useless. Or even better if they minus it and you can do this. Oh lord. Let's move on to place number two. Oh, another good lady. Elspeth Knight Errant. Oh, another one woman army. A lot of women on this on this list actually when I think about it. Elspeth, Resto Angel, Archangel, Thalia. They're really good in white obviously. So for four mana you win the game. That's basically what the card says. It's really hard to lose if you get to uh, play an Elspeth and start dominating the board. It's also probably one of the most played planeswalkers with the least activated ultimate in the whole game because it's it's not really that good. Um, and to get there it takes quite some time but yeah it's it's the same as all the other cards basically if you're an aggressive deck it's a good um, uh, curve topper if you're a mid-range deck it's a perfect threat to diverse your angles between creatures and planeswalkers if you're a control deck it's a win condition and if you're a combo deck, I guess you could play it as an alternate win condition, but probably not. But yeah, for four mana, you don't get much better than this. So before we take our number one pick here, we're gonna check out some honorable mentions before we check out the number one. So this is my honorable mentions. Uh, I own a Shield of Ameria, another card similar to Elish Norn, but very much more uncastable. But this is also a card that just ends the game if it enters the battlefield. So few decks can survive without one of their colors. Uh, so yeah, this is just... If you can get it into play, you win the game very, very, very often. 
And the last two cards is also really strong sideboard cards. Timely reinforcement with Snapcaster Mage. Oh, that's just so sick. You get your blockers, you get a bunch of life, and it doesn't cost you that much, just 3 mana. And if you can flash it back or something, it's just insane. The thing that kept it out for me was the fact that Siege Rhino is so popular right now, and this card is not very good against Siege Rhino. It tramples over the life very fast, and you can't chomp it, so... That keeps it out for me. Same reason for Core Firewalker. Uh, but the other deck that got the hammer, the blue-red Delver deck. This was really strong here. If you landed it, they basically can't win. They can't handle Core Firewalker if they didn't leave like Vapor Snagging, of course. But even then, it's real hard for them to uh, interact. So you get a reasonable sized guy with a very relevant protection and uh, gain life ability. Okay, I'm not sure if you have figured out my top one card in white for modern but let's just say it's a very cheap and uh, powerful one let's check it out path to exile well what can i say for one white mana you can kill whatever you want almost and it just doesn't just kill it it exiles it which is which is really really strong worm coils get out of here Kitchen Finks, voice, whatever, everything is leaves you with no trace. Besides that basic land, which is a relevant thing, of course, but sometimes the upside is so high that the drawback is just not not really relevant. And I'm not gonna lie, I've cast it on my own creatures a fair amount of the time. If you really need that extra mana or whatever. Or if they play like a lightning helix on your creature, you can path it in response. Then it's actually pretty good. So, the probably the best removal spell in the format, at instant speed for 1 mana. I, I can't see how I could put it any other way, way than as number 1. Maybe Elspeth, maybe Restoration Angel is up here, but... Most of the time where you have when you have a path takes out it's just so so good. The only real drawback to this card is that you don't want a path like a turn one burst of paradise. That's something you would rather like kill with a lightning bolt or something. So the earlier in the game you need to kill something, the worse path is, so Well, you can probably tune the deck to be to beat that little drawback. So that was my top 10 list for the white cards in modern. Please leave a comment if you agree, if you disagree. Did I forget any card? Probably. I had a few more on my list but I excluded them. Uh, what is your opinion? Should I have placed, let's say, Soulfire Grandmaster higher? Just because we all know that it would be really good. Anyway, please leave a comment, thank you for watching and have a great weekend.